Today I want to tell you about some of the apps that I use in my van life that I find are absolutely worth it and totally valuable. They give me a lot of information and they help me find where I am, what I need and all of those kinds of things. So I'm going to show you those today and maybe you'll get some ideas for what you might need in your van life as well. So stick around and I'm going to tell you all about them. Hello again, my name is Coralie, this is the van I travel in and my channel is called Jump With No Fear. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to tell you about a few apps that I have, well eight, nine, <laughs> eight or nine apps that I use pretty much all the time when I'm out camping. Some I use a little bit less than others but um, some I'm just constantly looking at and they help me figure out where I'm going, what I need to do, where I need to be and all the places that I need when I'm out camping. So I'm going to tell you about those today. Here are the apps that I use on my phone. These are nine apps which I use heaps. Now I'm going to look at my phone while I'm talking to you because I need to explain some of these to you. In fact, I'm going to move across a little bit so that there's room here for me to show you some screenshots from these. Number one, one and two sort of combined, one and one A maybe, <laughs> is Wiki Camps. The other one that's sort of the same but a little bit different is Camps Australia. Now um, obviously Camps Australia is based in Australia. So if you're not in Australia, there is bound to be something very similar that you can use. But I'm going to tell you about these ones today. Here's an example of what you can see in Wiki Camps. This here is the trip that Alexis and I took down to Adelaide and back. And you can see as I scroll through, I'll show you some of this um, as a like a video screen right here. Um, you can see all the places that I traveled and you can see all of the places that I stopped. So it gives you a trip planner. Um, not only that, but it shows you all of the things you need with filters so that you can decide uh, where you're going based on what you need. So there's a whole lot of filters such as campgrounds, caravan parks, backpacker hostels, day use areas, points of interest, information centers, public dump points, water facilities, all those sort of things. You can turn those on or off to, uh, you can make them other hide, show, or some of them are just with, without, and not on at all um, for various site features as well, such as free, or if it's cost one, or if it's donation, or if dogs are allowed, or if dogs aren't allowed, or if it's got showers or drinking uh, water, or if it's a pub or a hotel, all that sort of thing. Now you can set these filters to whatever you need, and it will show you only the camping sites around you that match that criteria. It is so useful. Uh, when we were traveling through down to Adelaide and, and through Victoria and then all the way back up and all that sort of stuff, um, I used it every day to figure out where we were going next. I had a rough idea of the places we were going to stay, but often that changed depending on how tired I was or if I felt like traveling any further or if we wanted to stay an extra day, all of that sort of thing. Um, I used Wiki Camps daily to help plan our trip while we were on the trip as well as before the trip. Camps Australia is similar but different. It does, uh, apparently it does show slightly different range of campsites in some places. Now, both of these, I think, at least I know Wiki Camps is run by the people who use it. So if someone finds a campsite, they will submit it to Wiki Camps and then Wiki Camps will look at putting that campsite on. But then Wiki Camps can also remove a campsite if it's not a valid campsite. Uh, as for Camps Australia, they have books that they've been putting out for decades, I think, and they have an app that goes along with that. And each listing for um, each campsite on Wikicamps and on Camps Australia has information about the campsite. Um, I don't know about Camps Australia because I don't use it all that often, but I know with Wikicamps, people can leave reviews. So if there's an area that um, used to be good and it's become a bit dodgy, you can sort of tell because you can scroll through all the reviews and you can see, oh, it was really great two years back, but it's gone downhill for whatever reason. Um, so you can scroll through all those reviews and see what people are saying. Um, 
kind of right up to the minute if it's a very popular campsite. So uh, when I've been using weekend camps, I've made sure that I leave reviews um, so that, uh, well, with things that are relevant to me, but also things that I think other people might find relevant as well, such as whether the phone connection was any good or not, because um, Alexis and I are on the internet a lot. That's our social life as well as a lot of things we enjoy are on the internet. So that's important for us. That's actually one of the filters in wiki camps as well. But um, the reviews are absolutely important because you're getting almost real-time information from people who have been there and who have, may have had a different experience to people in the past. So absolutely amazing. I use that thing constantly. I have a friend who uses Camps Australia more than Wikicamps, I think, and she finds it also really, really valuable. So if you're in Australia, check out either of those. Uh, I think Camps Australia is free. Wikicamps is a one-off cost of around $8, if I recall correctly, and it's absolutely worth it. Probably the best $8 I've ever spent. The next one I want to tell you about is an app called Road Trip. It's not strictly camping related, but in it, you can put all of the records for whatever vehicle you are driving. It will track your fuel economy. It'll track all of the costs, as long as you put those costs in there, and tell you how much your vehicle is costing you per 100 kilometers or per whatever. You can, you can drill down to all sorts of really cool statistics in this thing. Um, it'll have all the information you need. You can make notes about a vehicle. Um, all kinds of really, really useful information. Um, you can actually make road trips on it. I think you just set I haven't actually used that, but I think you just set the, um, the date and the odometer in it and then um, you can track your fuel economy and whatever else for that period of time. But it's got excellent information. Um, I update it all the time. It's suitable for anywhere around the world. You can have miles per gallon or uh, litres per 100 kilometres, um, whatever sort of measurements you like in there for wherever you are in the world. So it's really, really useful. The third one I want to tell you about is one called Petty. Petty as in short for petrol, um, probably Australia based, um, but there would be many others that you can choose from wherever you are in the world, undoubtedly. Most of them, I think, have user submitted data. Um, so if it's not kept up to date, then it's not going to be very useful for you. But um, Petty is up to date. I think, as far as I know, um, you can put in a location or it'll show you exactly where you are and show you what's around you. I've used that heaps as well when I'm driving, like if I'm heading off on a four hour trip and I think I need petrol before we continue, then um, I can just look up Petty, see what's around me and find the cheapest one or find one a little bit further along down the road that might also be a good price. Uh, another one that I don't use heaps, but it seems to be updated fairly regularly, is Petrol Spy. Um, again, I'm pretty sure that's user submitted data, and it shows you if the petrol, uh, it shows you if the price for the petrol in their last is over a certain number of days old. I can't remember exactly how many days, but it'll show you uh, the price in red. I think if the if the price is likely to be out of date, so the, that really helps to find cheap petrol wherever you're going. Um, so you do have to take these with a grain of salt because it's not like um, petrol stations are actually putting their data in here so people can pick whichever one is cheaper. But um, I don't know, maybe they are actually. But anyway, uh, yeah, really great for being able to find cheap petrol or gas if you're in the USA. Um, you would find one that's local to you, obviously. The fourth one I want to tell you about is called Here We Go. It is a mapping app and it has a whole lot of really good options to narrow down uh, what sort of roads you want to travel on. Um, it has offline maps, which uh, a lot of map apps did not have for a while, or at least sort of the, the native apps. <laughs> yeah, looking at you, Apple. Apple only just recently put the ability to download maps into Apple Maps, but other options are available, such as Here We Go, and it gives you really good options in regard to where you want to go. Depending on what vehicle you're driving, you've got various options to take you on roads that may or may not suit you, <laughs> the, or avoid roads that won't suit you. You can set your max vehicle speed, um, you can set automatically rerouting the, the where you're going in case there's a faster route, um, real-time rerouting as well, shortest travel distance, fastest travel distance, other things that you want to take off such as avoid U-turns, avoid ferries, avoid highways, avoid tunnels, avoid toll roads and avoid unpaved roads. So depending on your vehicle some of those might not suit you and um, that way you can get the preference 
that suits you and your vehicle. It gives turn by turn directions so you can have that as well as download offline maps to make sure that even if you're somewhere where there is no connection at all, you still know where you're going. The next one I want to tell you about is called Toilet Map. Again, this is for Australia. Uh, I think, yes, it is actually put out by the Australian government. So I think they are the ones that maintain that and probably they have that information because they are the ones that maintain the actual toilets as well. It is fantastic. It'll show you toilets of all different kinds. You can choose your preferences. If you need accessible facilities, it's got that. There's male toilet, female toilet, unisex toilet, all gender toilet, adult change facilities. If you've got an adult who has um, special requirements, um, baby change facilities, dump point uh, also other things that you might need such as sharps disposal so if you're diabetic and you need to get rid of uh, hypodermic needles you can do that um, drinking water ambulant facilities um, sanitary disposal showers all kinds of things so you can say if you're on foot or by car and you can show uh, you can narrow down the options even to show all the facilities ones that are open 24 hours ones that are open now tells you if they're open there's also an option for um, people who have an MLAK, which is a Master Locksmith's Access Key. I'm just reading off this. That allows people with a disability access to dedicated public facilities by purchasing an MLAK key, which will open all toilets, playground equipment, and other facilities fitted with a lock that uses that special cylinder. So it's fantastic. It's amazing. Um, if you don't have toilet facilities in your van when you're traveling, this is great because <laughs> you need to know where those loos are. And um, it's so great. I've, I've also used it heaps. Again, on our big trips, um, I used it heaps because we didn't have our uh, little toilet that I have down here now. Um, so we needed to know where toilets were. The sixth one I want to tell you about is one called Speed Test. Now, if you're I don't know if it's just Australia, it probably is because the options for carriers are Australian ones, but um, I don't know, maybe that's only showing me those options because I am in Australia, but it's called Speed Test by Ookla. <laughs> and um, the speed test for your personal connection is fantastic, but the thing that I find it really good for is the map. Now it shows you exactly where you are right in this point. You cannot search on the map, which is a limitation because it's not a mapping app, but it uses data from other people's mobile phones to give you an idea of the signal strength in those areas. So if you wanna find somewhere that's different, you can sort of zoom right out and you go, okay, let's say I'm going to the Gold Coast and you go, um, I'm inland from the Gold Coast a bit. Let's find some big areas that I know of and then I can sort of narrow it down to find the smaller area that I'm looking at in between. So I might go, all right, there's Narang and there's Highland Park and I mean, this is suburbia, so I'm not going to be camping there. But if I needed to check the connection in that area, I could zoom right in and go, oh, okay, here we go. We're at street level. I will be parking on Citrus Drive and I can see that the connection there is blue, which is 5G. So I know that that's gonna be really good. But if I'm gonna be camping out Whoop Whoop somewhere where the connection can sometimes be a bit dodgy, um, such as Narang National Park. When I'm zooming in here to Narang National Park, I can see there's a whole lot of black spots. And as you zoom further and further in, it narrows down those spots where either there's a little bit of a connection, barely any or none or whatever. And uh, it will give you information about if there's a connection there um, and if that will suit you or not fantastic app. I wish it had search on it, but as I said, it's not a mapping app. It's a speed test app. So um, I, I, yeah, th that's annoying, but it's just a limitation of what the app is designed to do. The seventh one I want to tell you about, it's called Sunseeker. If you have solar panels, this is fantastic because it will show you depending on which direction you're facing and you know it uses the um, compass or the whatever you call it, the GPS or whatever in your phone to tell you which direction the sun is going to rise in and what time also and uh, exactly which direction it's going to set in. So if you are putting your solar panels out at night so that they're ready to grab sun in the morning, you know exactly which way the sun is coming from. You can also estimate then by looking in that direction if there are going to be trees in the way um, in the morning or you can sort of go, okay, well I can see that if the sun's going to rise over there, that big tree is going to be in the way so I'll put my solar panels a little bit further over that way. Uh, really, really useful. That is a fantastic app. I would be surprised if it wasn't worldwide uh, so it's worth looking that one up to 
see if you can use it. It's a fantastic app. The last one I want to share with you, the eighth one that I would not do without. It could be better. It's a little bit lacking, but I am trying to tell enough people about it so that maybe more people will use it and it'll become more useful. It's called Share Waste and in it, you can look at either where you are or where you're going to go and find places that would like compost waste, so food waste. Uh, they will, a person will have an account, they will list that they've got like a compost bin or something available for you to get rid of your food waste and you can message them and say, uh, I'm gonna be in the area this time or whatever, are you available? Can I drop off some food waste into your compost bin? And um, unfortunately, every time I've messaged someone, they haven't checked it. I don't know if it's a case of the type of people who are into gardening are maybe perhaps less likely to be the type who are always online. As a generalization, that might be true. Um, <laughs> but I, I really want this to work well. Maybe some areas are busier than others, I don't know. But when I've been um, traveling, admittedly mostly I'm traveling inland where the population is a lot smaller because there are better campsites and um, less busy and cheaper. Um, but you will message a person, ask, can I drop off some compost waste? They will say yes or no, or it'll be available or just put it over the fence or the bin is here. You can just go through the fence and put it in, whatever. They'll give you some information. And uh, on that listing, they will also say what sort of compost waste they'll accept. Like some will say they don't want onion or some will say they don't want meat or I guess it depends what they're using it for. So some might be feeding animals and for example, um, I don't know, maybe pigs or chickens or something can't have certain foods so they don't want that in their compost. So that is a really really good app. I like to avoid putting my food waste into normal landfill bins because when food waste is put into landfill, uh, don't quote me exactly on this because I don't remember all the words but I think it's an anaerobic environment and it means that the food waste creates methane rather than um, doing what it does in a compost bin where it can turn to soil. Um, it can't do that in, um, in landfill um, because there's not enough oxygen and I guess not the right bacteria for that food waste to break down and return to the earth as soil. So if you are putting your food waste in the bin and you have other options, um, try not to do that because uh, it's really not great. <laughs> um, but I know not everyone has the option to be able to compost their food waste. So there might actually even be somewhere near you. If you look on this app, Share Waste, and I'm pretty sure it's just Australia, but there may be something similar in other places. So you can find out where to put your food waste via this app if you don't have the facilities where you are to compost your food waste. So that's it. That's all of the ones I wanted to tell you about. As I said, they are really, really useful to me. And I think some of you also might find them useful. If you didn't already know they exist, maybe you'll have found something that um, is actually really helpful for you. So I hope that was helpful. Um, if you enjoyed it, please hit the thumbs up and uh, that will help other people to see it and maybe they might find something useful out of that as well. So thank you again for watching. Thank you to my awesome patrons. You're all so wonderful. Thank you for supporting me for the time that you have. I truly appreciate it. Um, and thank you to everyone watching as well. I really appreciate all of you who watch to the end especially. And uh, I appreciate when you leave comments as well. Please leave a comment. I love replying to comments. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget the thumbs up and hit the subscribe and the little bell so you can get a notification every time I upload a new video. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.